I can't help but wish AMD would release products such as the Nano at these competitive prices, rather than wait 5-6 to six months and then make the product a viable option. At $650, the Nano is very much a niche product and at that price should have only been considered by users who simply couldn't make the space for the better cooled Fury X. Our original best bang for your buck GPU video found that on average, the Nano came at a cost of over $8 per frame, whereas the 390X cost just over $6 per frame and the 390 less than $5 per frame. Now with prices slashed to $500, the Nano plummets to a similar cost per frame as the 390X which is a seriously good deal for a high-end graphics card. Thankfully, the nano price adjustment can also be felt down under. The Fury X currently retails for around $1,000 Australian dollars and the standard Fury $900, while the nano can be had for $850, though that's still around 40% more than the 390X asking price. Anyway, the point is the nano has now become a viable option as it's priced to compete closer to the GeForce GTX 980 than the 980 Ti. Not too long ago, we put together another head-to-head -head GPU battle featuring the R9 390X and GTX 980. AMD came out on top, providing a much stronger cost per frame, so it will be interesting to see if the Nano can do the same. So without wasting any more time, let's get to the benchmarks. First up, we have Battlefield 4, and here both graphics cards delivered the same 59 FPS average at the stock reference clock speeds. Once overclocked to their maximum stable values, the GTX 980 pulled ahead to enjoy a 5% performance advantage. The GTX 980 gets stomped in Batman Arkham Knight as the Nano is a little over 20% faster using the stock clock speeds. Overclocking does help Nvidia reduce the deficit, but even so, the Nano is still a comfortable 14% faster. The Assassin's Creed Syndicate performance sees the Nano provide the highest average frame rate, while the GTX 980 didn't dip as low when looking at the minimum frame rate. Overclocked, the GTX 980 once again took charge, albeit by a very slim margin. The Nano was able to leave the GTX 980 behind in Call of Duty Black Ops 3 when comparing the cards at their stock clocks. Overclocking both cards allowed the GTX 980 to catch the Nano and even deliver a slightly better minimum frame rate. Like most of the results seen so far, the GTX 980 and Nano offer similar performance at the default AMD and Nvidia clock specifications. And once overclocked, the 980 finds itself at a slight advantage. Grand Theft Auto 5 plays much the same on the GTX 980 as it does on the Nano out of the box. However, once we overclocked both cards, the 980 this time finds itself well ahead of the Nano. The GTX 980 was faster in Just Cause 3, but it was just one frame faster on average when comparing the stock configurations. Overclocked, the 980 became three frames per second faster on average, 6 FPS faster when comparing the minimum frame rate. Both the Nano and the GTX 980 delivered the same exact performance in Mad Max using the stock clock speeds. Overclocked, the 980 took the lead by just 3% when comparing the average frame rates. Testing with Rainbow Six Siege, we find that the Nano is able to crush the GTX 980 by 12% margin. Interestingly, it was only around 1% faster when comparing the minimum frame rate. The overclocking results are interesting as well. Here the Nano is faster when comparing the average frame rate but slower when looking at the minimum. The Star Wars Battlefront results are similar to those just seen when testing with Rainbow Six Siege. At the stock clock speeds, the Nano was 14% faster when looking at the average frame rate, but 4% slower when it comes to the minimum. The overclocking results are even more extreme. Here the Nano is 4% faster for the average frame rate, but dipped 14% lower for the minimum frame rate. Last up, we have The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, and here the results are very competitive, though it's the GTX 980 that drops down the lowest while sustaining a similar or faster average frame rate. As you might have expected, the Maxwell based GTX 980 does consume less power than the Nano. Here we see the total system consumption is 17% lower with the 980 and 20% lower once overclocked. The Just Cause 3 power consumption figures aren't quite as extreme. Here the Nano consumed 12% more power at the stock clock speeds and just 9% more once overclocked. Having tested almost a dozen games, it's now clear why AMD reduced the price of the Radeon R9 Nano by so much. Now at $500, it competes very well with the slightly cheaper GeForce GTX 980, which we have priced currently at $480. Comparing their out of the box, or stock performance if you will, we found that the Nano was on average 6% faster than the 980. 980 was only able to better the Nano in Just Cause 3, 
while it provided the same performance in Battlefield 4, Mad Max and GTA 5. Given only a $20 or so difference in price, it's fair to say both GPUs deliver a similar bang for your buck. But what if you plan to overclock? Doing so can boost the performance of the Nano by 9%, while the 980 can be pushed to produce a 17% higher average frame rate. As the better overclocker, the 980 was able to make up the performance deficit to come in just one frame per second faster on average. This means if you plan to overclock, the 980 is technically the better value option of the two, though of course there's very little in it. It is worth noting that we tested using stock reference cards, and while all the Nanos at this point feature the same PCB design and cooler, this isn't the case with the 980. The reference 980 that we tested is inferior to virtually every one of Nvidia's board partner designs when it comes to cooling and even power delivery for the GPU. Therefore, it's possible you could achieve even better overclocks than ours. The Nano is seriously tempting at the revised $500 price tag, but I'm not sure I'd pick one up over a 980. Other than its teeny tiny size, the Nano offers no real advantage over the 980, so unless you press for space, it's not the best option. This is interesting given we found the 390X was quite a bit better than the 980 in terms of value. On paper, the Nano should be up to 45% faster than the 390X, and given it now only costs 25% more, it seems like a no-brainer. Unfortunately, as is often the case, it's not that black and white, and instead the Nano is only around 20% faster than the 390X on average. Still, if you don't plan to overclock, then the Nano is likely going to be the preferred choice. But be aware, most 980s come with at least a 10% factory overclock, so that's going to bridge the gap between the two anyway. In the end, if you aren't concerned with card length, but care about efficiency and overclocking headroom, then the 980 is the card to get. Then obviously, those seeking a compact graphics card will gravitate towards the Nano. As a side note, if you plan on setting up a DIY liquid cooling system, then the Nano could be the preferred choice. If you can keep the card cool enough, achieving Fury X or even greater performance through overclocking is possible, which will place the Nano more on par with the 980 Ti rather than the vanilla 980. As always, please let me know what you guys think and be sure to let us know which of the two you would choose if you happen to be unfortunate enough to have $500 burning a hole in your back pocket. Thanks for joining me again and I'll see you guys next time.